Christina Rennick and I am an art teacher and an artist. I have been doing a lot of virtual art classes this year and I have been using Jamboard which is a free Google Chrome extension to help my students learn about art. We've been having a great time with it. It's interactive. I can see what they're doing while they're doing it and then I can also help them with it while they're actually working on it. So it has made my classroom feel like a real life classroom even though we are not physically in the same room. It really does feel like we are. We've already used it in my class for drawing and practicing different kinds of lines and different styles of gesture drawings and expressive line drawings. And now we're doing color theory. So I've created a template for my students to use and I am going to include it for free down in the description. So after you watch the video, if you want to use my template, you are welcome to make a copy, import it into Jamboard, just like I showed you how to do and then to use it for yourself or for your students. On the template there's a color wheel, there's a value scale, a monochromatic scale, a section for analogous colors and for complementary colors. So if you find the video useful and you want to use the template that goes along with it, just check it out in the description down below. So the one thing about Jamboard is it does have a limited color palette, but in this case it's a really good thing because instead of just getting to pick the secondary colors we actually create them. So I'm going to show you how to upload the template for color theory for our practice today and then I'm going to show you how to fill those in including how to mix your own secondary colors. So what I'm going to do is I am going to in real time fill out the whole entire template from the beginning to the end. I'm not going to speed it up at all so that if you want to work along with me you can or if you find it just relaxing to watch it at normal speed then you can just watch the whole thing at normal speed. If you want to speed it up in certain sections once you understand how it works, feel free. The other thing is after that I will include a sped up version that you can watch if you want to be reminded of how to do something or if you want to show it to your students at a faster speed. But I'm going to first play normal speed and I'll talk my way through it as I'm working and then a faster version at the end. So while you're watching this video, you might keep in mind that the way that I did it with my students is I divided the introduction to color theory into three sections. The first day we talked about color theory and the color wheel and my students created their color wheel. Then the second day we talked about value scales and monochromatic scales and that's what my students worked on. On the third day we did a combination of the complementary colors and the analogous colors. So it was a three day project. In the description, I will put the time stamps for each one of those sections so that if you do want to split it up with your students, you can just click on those time stamps. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Any suggestions, let me know also. If you find this useful, please like, comment, and subscribe, and share it with anybody else who you think might find it useful or fun as well. So without further ado, I am going to open up Jamboard, share my screen, and show you how to do this. So let's go. Okay, so we are going to go to Jamboard to one I already have set up for color theory. There's several different ways that you can get to Jamboard. So if you go to your waffle on Google Chrome, scroll down to Jamboard, then you can see that you can pick any of them you already have up. That's one way to do it. You can also have your links added to Google Classroom. So you could have it as material like this one is here and they could click on it and get there or you could add it as an assignment. The way that I do it with my students is I have a Google site and they scroll to the day's work and they click on their Jamboard there. So that's different ways that you can access Jamboard. I have mine already open so I am going to just show you how I started. So we have the first few pages for a little bit of basic information about color theory. So here we have just a color wheel and a little bit of information about the history. Now color is one of the elements of design. So we've already talked about line, shape, form, and we've used a little color, but now we're really going to get into how we can use color and create our own colors. Roy G. Biv, of course, is the common way to remember the colors of the rainbow in order. So red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. And for our purposes, we are just going to combine indigo and violet to create purple. So I like to tell my students that we say Roy G. Bip. 
Here is the template and the information for my students for the first day. And then I add more information as the days go. But we are going to use this template here. And I have left my fourth page open for an example page to do demonstrations. And here's my completed intro to color theory assignment, which is also what my students will do and also what you will do. So what I'm going to do first is import the images. So I'm going to go to the icon with the mountains, add image. And I am going to get it from my Google Drive, and I'm going to double click on it. It pulls it in. Make it the size that I want, which is the full size. Now there's still going to be a little leftover room for examples and trying things out. What you can do for your students, they know how to copy and paste. So, so what I had my students do for their own Jamboards is they click on it, they do Control C or Command C, and then scroll over to their page, click on their page. So if they were framed six, they would control or command V. Now they have their own copy and then they would also make a sticky note with their first and last name and their block number. Now that is their page and then they would work on it from there. So for ours, this is our example. And we are going to go in here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start with the Roy G. Bip, as I tell my students. So we are going to either write it or we could type it. I will type it because it will be a little bit neater. So what we're going to do here first is just write out Roy G. Bip, which is Indigo and Violet together. So we remember the order. And then we are going to put them around the outside so that we know the order and we don't forget. So this is what you guys will all do. Then the other thing you're going to do is you are going to circle the primary colors. And we see here the primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. Those are the very first colors. You can't create your own. So we just want to remind ourselves that those are the primary colors. And we're going to start with those. So we're going to circle the red, the yellow, and the blue. This is going to help us remember. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to fill in all of the primary colors. So we are going to choose the highlighter brush because it is the darkest, most intense color, and we're going to do red. So we are going to go in and we're going to zoom it here. We could go 100%, but the bigger it is, the easier it is to do a nice job. So we are going to use 200%, and it's a highlighter tool. So if you just do a little bit, it's going to be scratchy. So in order to have excellent craftsmanship, we want to fill it in all the way. If you go outside the lines, it is not a big deal. And in fact, sometimes I intentionally do. And then I'll just go in with an eraser to tidy up the edges. Again, for my good craftsmanship. But the most important thing is to have it filled in all the way, solid, solid, solid. So there's one primary color. Now the next primary color is yellow. And again, we can't create these colors by mixing other colors. And that's why they're primary, because they're the first colors. So we're gonna color this in all the way. And again, we are using the highlighter tool for this. So anywhere where you can look at it and you can see that it's not the darkest possible value, or this, it's not the most intense yellow, you can see any light, light showing through. You gotta go in and make it a little bit more by putting more layers of the yellow. If you were using poster paint, you would probably need to do the same thing 
and put several layers of paint until it was nice and smooth and solid looking. Okay. Then our last primary color is blue. And you can see they're separated from each other on the color wheel. Now this is more of a light blue, but that's what's on Jamboard, so that's what we're gonna use. And it works fine. So what I'm doing is I'm using my left hand to hold down the touchpad and I'm using my right hand to draw with. And if I have to fix up my circle around the B in a minute, that's okay. Okay, so now we have our primary colors. They are nice and solid and smooth. They look nice and neat. I actually am gonna clean this up blue up just a little bit okay now we're gonna mix colors so the secondary colors are where you take two first colors combine them together so two primary colors combine them together and they create a new color which is the second color or a secondary color so here the color wheel is like a cheat sheet the way that you can use the color wheel like a cheat sheet or a map to find out how to mix colors is you look at it and we want to make orange and it's right in between the red and the yellow so we know that we are going to have to mix red and yellow to create orange so we're going to try that now since we're using digital tools instead of paint instead of actually blending them in real life we're going to be visually blending them we're going to make layers and this is what we did we would test it out over here on the side so we know it's got to be red and yellow so you could try first putting the yellow with a highlighter down because it's bolder and you could test that out and then see what happens if you put red on top and you could also test the the red on the bottom and the yellow on top. But just make sure that your tester is very solid with that highlighter underneath. Then the next tool over is watercolor and it is much more pale. So we're gonna use that to layer on top. So there's one layer. There's a second layer. And there's a third layer. Let's see what happens if we do a fourth. I think that fourth layer looks nice. Now we're gonna test the yellow watercolor over the red and see how that looks. So there's one layer, two layers, three layers, four layers. So you would pick which one you like. And I, I think I like the yellow on top of the red, so that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna fill in with highlighter, which is the bold one, the red first solid just as solid as I did my primary color so this is going to be solid red first because we are going to layer the yellow over top and I have a special trick for you to show you how to make the yellow look nice and smooth or the anytime you use the watercolor Solid. And I will clean up the edges once I've done both. Okay, I'm going to show you a trick for how to make the yellow watercolor look smooth. So let me show you what happens if you, you think you're going to be careful by drawing separate lines to outline it. But do you see how it looks all choppy? That is not, it is turning orange, but it doesn't look very nice. See that? So I'm gonna back that up and show you how to make it look smooth so it turns into a really beautiful, smooth orange color. If we make a, two, uh, a line with our watercolor, it looks like that. 
if we make several lines overlapping, they look choppy and kind of scratchy. But if in one motion, as if we're drawing a line, we overlap it all in one motion, it does not create extra lines. So we could make as many lines overlapping as we want to, and as long as we don't pick up once, it makes it nice and smooth. So let me show you how that affects our orange color. So I'm not gonna pick up my finger and I'm just gonna fill it in with one color and then I'm gonna do another layer. And I think on my practice I used four layers of it and we'll see how this looks. See how that looks. That looks nice. So now I just got to touch it up a little bit with an eraser on the sides. And then I'm going to use the red highlighter to touch this up. That was kind of wobbly. So I just hit the back button. And I will touch that up later. So now you can see we have red, orange, yellow. I'm gonna do the same process with my green and my purple. I've already done a test, so I know that I like the blue underneath and the yellow on top but you are welcome to try it out because my students have done different combinations. You can try it on the side, just like we did with the orange and see which one you like better. I'm gonna start with the blue highlighter on mine. Go to 200%. Fill it in. Now there is a green color that you can choose on Jamboard, but don't choose it because we are mixing our own colors. So anytime if there's something that you just did and you're not real happy with it, you can just hit the back button or you can hit control Z. And it's very important to have the bottom layer be very smooth. Now, we make green by mixing yellow and blue. So now I'm gonna take my yellow highlighter and I'm gonna do that smooth motion again like we did with the orange. So I'm not picking up my finger in between. And I'm gonna do, that was one layer. Two layers. I'm gonna look and see if that is oh yeah I think that looks nice let's take a look from further away and let me try one more layer just to see if I like it or not no I think that looks too yellow so I'm gonna back that one off I'm gonna back it off one more time to see nope that's too blue that's just right So I'll just use my eraser to clean that up and then we're gonna do purple. And then I'm gonna take the highlighter and touch up this edge here. Oop, not that much though.
Then I'm going to do the same thing with the blue. Now, the last thing we have is the purple. And if we look, purple is in between red and blue, so we know that's what we have to mix. Again, you can do your own sample and decide how you want to make your purple. I liked using the solid red with the blue on top, so that's what I'm going to do. And since I need red here anyway, I don't have to erase the little tip of red that's on there. Nice and even for our craftsmanship. And it's very, very important to have the red solidly filled in. Otherwise, when we put our blue over top, it's not going to look well crafted. It's going to be kind of rough. So now I'm switching to my blue. And actually, I see a little light spot here, so I'm going to finish that up. Now I'm going to switch to blue watercolor, and I'm going to use the trick of holding down with one hand as long as you don't pick up you can overlap as many times as you want to there that's one layer now we're going to do a second layer somewhere between two and four layers usually looks like a a pretty good purple. I think that looks good. I'm going to try one more just to see. But yeah, do you see how that looks too blue? So I'm going to take that layer away. But I am happy with that purple. And now I'll clean up my edges. And that looks pretty good. I do see one spot where I need to touch up my red highlighter right here. So, so I'm just going to use my red highlighter to even out this. There we go. Let's see how that looks. There we go. So now we have the color wheel, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. Okay, so we finished our color wheel. We applied the primary colors, the red, the yellow, and the blue, and then we created our secondary colors out of those primary colors. We used excellent craftsmanship, and we created a color wheel in the correct order. The next thing we're gonna do is we are gonna create a value scale. Value is light and dark. So you maybe have used value when you were shading something with a pencil or using charcoal or paint, and we're gonna do that same thing. We're gonna create a value scale that shows that white is the lightest value and black is the darkest value, and we're gonna create all the shades in between. So let's try that. So now that we've finished our color wheel, we're gonna do the value scale and we are going to go from light to dark. And so let's look at that. With the light to dark, all we use is the black and the white. White is the lightest value. And if you look at the next page, here's my example. So white is the lightest value, black is the darkest, middle gray is in the middle, and then there's the shades in between. So for ours, the white one is already white, so we don't have to do anything to it. The darkest one we'll start with, and we're gonna fill that in with a black highlighter all the way. 
So on the other end of the scale is the black box, and that is as dark as possible. It's the darkest value, so we want to fill that in all the way. And again, I'm going to go outside the lines a little bit and then clean it up. That way I can make sure I'm getting it nice and dark. So for the white one, we just leave it white. For the black one, we fill it in all the way black. Then we can clean this up here. There, we are done with the the lightest value and the darkest value. Now in between is middle, so it should be halfway between light and dark. So we're gonna fill that one in. First, we're gonna start, similar to how we mixed our secondary colors, we're gonna start with a solid layer of black. And you can do examples on the side, little test swatches like we did for our color to see what kind of combinations you want. fill this in all the way black. If I don't fill it in solid, it is not gonna look neat when I add the white. So now I'm gonna add white watercolor. And I'm gonna use that same trick to make it nice and smooth. And I think that might be a perfect middle gray. So I'm gonna leave it there. I can always decide to add some black or white watercolor on top of it. And I did notice in my experience, since the white is hard to see on the white, I am still gonna clean up that edge that you can't see just so that we don't accidentally have too much white on there. Now we want a gray that's in between the middle gray and the black. So we're again gonna fill this in all the way black as solid as we can. And then we're going to play around with how to make it be exactly in the middle. So I'm filling this in. Okay. So we have this all filled in black. So I'm gonna use the white watercolor, but we already know that one layer of white watercolor is enough to really make it a middle gray. So what that means is I might have to do a couple layers of black watercolor over top of that to create the perfect value, to create the perfect value. So there's one layer. You can see it getting a little bit darker. So it's very similar to mixing our secondary colors. In each layer is one smooth motion. Ooh, it's starting to look good. Let me try one more layer here. Let's see. Hmm, let me try one more just to see. Ooh, I like that. I think that looks good. So now I'm just gonna clean this up. And then we'll go to the other side. There's a couple options on this side. One would be that you could just do several layers of black watercolor. Maybe that's what I'll do. But you could also do black with more white watercolor on top. Okay. 
get more needles. This would be too much because we're trying to make it halfway between gray and white. I think that's going to be pretty good right there. So you could also, again, like I said, use black underneath and then layers of white to lighten it up. But what I did for this one was I used watercolor. So it's up to you. And then I'll touch up my blue circle around the bead. There we go. All right, let's take a look. I think that looks good. So we have done the value scale. So we finished the value scale. We made a scale that went from white on the lightest end and gradually got darker until it was black on the darkest end. So that's light to dark. That's the value scale. The next thing we're going to do is the monochromatic scale. That is very similar to the value scale and it does use value, but it's with a color instead of black and white. So you can pick any color you want to and the middle value is going to be the plain color. And then on the right side, you're going to gradually add more black watercolor to make it darker. And that's going to be a shade of the color you choose. And then on the left side, you're going to add gradually more white until it becomes very, very light. And that is going to be a tint. So when you add black, you have made a shade, and when you add white, you have created a tint. So let's try it. We're going to pick a color that we want to use that's on Jamboard, and we're going to create a monochromatic scale. Let's do it. We finished the value scale, which went from light to dark, and now we're going to do a monochromatic scale. Remember that mono means one, chroma means color, so a monochromatic scale is just one color that we're going to use. But we're still going to go from light to dark with the monochromatic scale. So in order to do the monochromatic scale, we're going to choose a color, not black or white. So choose one of the colors. You can see my example, I did red, so maybe I'll do blue just to change it up. So I went from light to dark. On here, I'm going to use blue for my example, and I'm going to start with the highlighter. For each one of these, the difference is for each one of these, we're going to fill in each one solid with blue before we do anything. The middle one is going to be 100% solid blue. We want to fill this in all the way, each one, every single one of these boxes is going to be solid. I'm using blue, but whatever color you want. Some of my students did fill in the whole entire thing solid blue and then redraw the lines. So if you would like to do that, that's definitely an option. The most important thing is just to get it completely covered so there's no light spots on it at all. This will allow our next layer to look. Okay, so the middle one is just straight up blue. Nothing's gonna happen to that one. The ones on the right are going to become darker, and that is called a shade. So when you add black to a color, you are creating a shade. So we're gonna make a shade of the blue. And the ones on the right, we're gonna add white, and so that is creating a tint of the blue. I think of shade, and I remember that it's darker because if you're underneath a tree, it is in the shade and it's a little darker in the shade. So we're filling in this side 100% blue and you can see why some of my students just decided to fill it in all the way and then redraw the lines. So now that we have this filled in Let's just clean it up a little bit to make it easier to see what we're doing.
So now let's work on this side for a minute. We want to add black to create a shade. Tints and shades, the dark side is the shades. We want the far end to be very dark. So we're going to add enough with our smooth, one smooth motion. So we know we're going to need a few layers. Because we don't want it to be all the way black, but we do want it to be very, very dark. We still want to be able to tell that it's blue. Let's see, can we still tell? Yeah. Let's try one more layer and see. Now let's try a little bit in the middle one. There's one layer. I love how the edges of it really look like watercolor. Let's see how that looks. I think that looks good. I'm going to zoom back in. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Now we're going to make tints. And those also start with a solid layer of blue or whatever your color is that you chose. So as long as it's one color, that is monochromatic. Doesn't matter what color it is. Just gotta make sure it's all the way filled in. And this side is tints. So just like on the, the shade end, we wanted to make it very, very dark with black watercolor. We're going to do the same thing on the tint side, the far end, and make it very, very light with white watercolor. And again, just to make it easy to see what we're doing, I'm gonna clean this up a little bit here. We'll do a final touch up at the end. And you can choose not to let it overlap so much if you prefer. Um, this is just the way that I started doing it. All right, let's take our white watercolor and on the far end, we're going to make the tinge side as light as we can. That's one layer. Two layers. three layers. We still want it to look blue, but we want it to be very light. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, maybe try one more. Yep, I like it. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to make it in a middle value between plain blue and very, very light blue. So I will just add layers until 
Oh, now I think that that is too close to the light layer and too far away from the middle layer. So I'm going to undo that one. And I think that looks good. Let's take a look. Yes, I think that looks very good. It goes gradually from light to dark. So all I have to do is clean that up now. Grab my eraser. Any parts that are still take a look. So now we have our color wheel, we have our value scale, and now we have our monochromatic scale. So we did our monochromatic scale and we went with one color which is a monochromatic scale and we went from light to dark. The next thing we're going to do is the complementary colors. So complementary colors are across from each other on the color wheel. So if you look at the color wheel you will see that directly across from the red is green, directly across from yellow is purple, and directly across from blue is orange. They are opposite. There's no red and green, there's no yellow and purple, and there's no blue and orange. So they don't have anything to do with each other, which makes them really look good together and really contrast very well together. So now we're gonna work on our complementary colors. So here's our complementary color template. And the first thing we're going to do is we are going to fill the first box of each one with the primary color. So the way I like to do it is first, just to remind myself, I'm going to put a little R in the first one, a little Y in the second one for yellow, and then for the last one, of course, we will put a B for blue. This will just help us remember what we're going to do. We're going to fill this in all the way solid with the highlighter for each primary color and then we are going to do the opposite color right next to it. So the first part's pretty simple. We've already gotten really good at filling in our primary colors a solid. So we're going to fill in the red all the way. And we're going to be looking at the color wheel to help us remember which ones are the complementary colors. So we filled in the red all the way. Make sure it's nice and smooth and even. We're going to do the same thing with the yellow. Fill that in. Okay, then our last one is the blue. So I'll put a little blue highlighter, fill that in. And you can see it covers up the letters fine. Okay, 
So now we have our primary colors in the boxes. So we are going to literally look at our color wheel, which is a map. It's a cheat sheet so we can see how colors work. And if you look, the red one is pointing at the green one. They are literally opposite each other on the color wheel, if you can see that. So if you look directly across, there is green. That's the complement, and that's what we're going to put there. The reason why we say they're opposites is because in order to make green, you have to use blue and yellow, and there's literally zero red in the green. So that's why it's opposite, and that's why it looks so good with green is because they really contrast with each other. So we're just going to fill that in green. And again, the way that we did that on our color wheel was we started with blue solid highlighter, fill it in all the way, and then we used yellow watercolor, several layers, with one smooth motion, there's one layer. two layers. I think three is good, but I'm going to try one more. Ooh, no, I think I'm going to keep that one. I like it. So now we've got the green and the red, and you can see they really do pop against each other. Then we're going to do the opposite of yellow. So we're going to look at our handy dandy color wheel. and we have yellow, and if we look, it's pointing at purple. It's directly across, and again, purple is made with red and blue, so there's zero yellow in it. So that's why it's opposite. That's why the Lakers are the colors that they are, because it really stands out and it makes a good uniform you can see from far away. So to, to get our nice purple, we start with the red highlighter unless you have found a different way you like to do it maybe you start with the blue but this is what I like to do so I'm going to fill it in first it's nice and solid and then I'm going to take my blue watercolor and do several smooth layers until I get a purple that I like There it is, I like it. It's a good purple. Then I'll clean this up. And then the only one left is the blue one. And we're gonna look at our color wheel again. So we look at our color wheel. We have blue and it is pointing at and opposite of orange. Again, orange is made with red and yellow, so there's no blue in it whatsoever. My old college colors at Hope College were blue and orange. With mine, I like to start with the red highlighter for my orange, so that's what I'm gonna do. But again, if you've done your own test and you have a different combination of red and yellow that you like to do, by all means, use what works for you as long as it's made out of red and yellow. Now I'm going to take my yellow watercolor, go on top, do several layers until I think I have a nice orange that contrasts very well with my blue. And I feel like this is the one right here. Clean that up. There, now we have our complementary colors. We've got red and green, yellow and purple, and blue and orange. So now we have our complementary colors done. So now we're done with our complementary colors and it looks great. The next thing and the last thing we're gonna do is analogous colors. 
So maybe you've had somebody explain something to you by making an analogy or you've used analogy in English class. So for art, analogous colors is very similar. It's colors that are next to each other on the color wheel and they have something in common. They are similar. Let's go ahead and take a look at that and work on our analogous colors. So now we're going to work on analogous colors. Remember, analogous is like analogy. It is colors that are similar or related to each other in some way. So for us, our analogous colors are literally next to each other on the color wheel. And the reason they are next to each other on the color wheel is because they have something in common. So the red one and the orange one, for instance, they're analogous colors. And the reason that they're analogous is because they have something in common. And what they have in common is orange is made with yellow, but also with red. So there is red in the orange. Also, orange and yellow are analogous because orange has yellow in it. So if you look, every color that is touching the next one, it has something in common with it. So red and purple are similar. Red and purple are analogous because there is red and purple. So for your analogous section, all you need to do is pick three colors that are analogous. You can pick any one because as long as they are touching each other, they're analogous. So I could do blue, purple, and red, or purple, red, and orange, or orange, yellow, and green. Any combination. If you look at my example, I did yellow, green, and blue last time. Yellow, green, and blue. So this time I'm gonna switch it up and I'm gonna do, let's see, blue, purple, and red, just for fun. So I am going to start with the blue. And it is a primary color. All I gotta do is fill it in all the way with my blue highlighter. Sure it's nice and solid. Clean up the edges. And then the next thing after blue is purple. So that's going to be our next one because it's touching. And when I made my purple, I like to start with a red base of a red highlighter. So we're going to fill that in solid. And by now, we're basically experts in creating secondary colors on Jamboard. So this probably won't take you too long. Fill that in all the way with our red. Make sure there's no light spots anywhere. And then the thing that makes it analogous or similar is that it has blue. So now we're going to put our blue on there. There, I, I, I like to think of analogous colors as cousins to each other. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, that looks good. Clean that up. There, so now we have the blue, the purple, and the last one is gonna be red. And again, red is analogous to purple because purple has red in it. So they are related. So 
Fill that in, nice and solid. Clean up the edges. sure everything is well done and it looks like it is so now we have our analogous colors done and like I said you could choose any three for yours as long as they are three that are connected to each other on the color wheel so good job you guys you are done with the whole intro to color theory template so you have your color wheel in the right order You've mixed your secondary colors. You created a value scale from light to dark. You created a monochromatic scale from light to dark. You created your complementary colors and your analogous colors. There's more things to know about color theory, but these are some of the most basic ones that are really important for you to know about. So we finished our analogous colors. We chose three analogous colors and we put those in the template and now we're done with the analogous colors. So now you should know how to make a color wheel. You should know what primary colors are. You should know what secondary colors are and how to create them for yourselves. You know and can create a value scale and a monochromatic scale and also what complementary colors are and what analogous colors are. So I hope you found this useful. If you did, please like, comment, and share with the others, and please subscribe to my channel. Let me know in the comments if you have anything else you'd like to learn how to do, either on paper or in real life or online. And thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you have a great day, and I love you guys. Bye. Mwah. He came to help me. <laughs> you say hi. <laughs> okay. Okay. You can go now. You can go now. <laughs> you can go now. Okay.